Hey, good morning. We're in 1 Samuel 20, verses 24 to 34. And this is a long one, so we won't say too much, but let's read it out. Then David hid in the field, and when the new moon had come, the king sat down to eat the feast. Now the king sat on his seat, as at other times, on a seat by the wall. And Jonathan arose, and Abner sat by Saul's side, but David's place was empty. Nevertheless, Saul did not say anything that day, for he thought, Something has happened to him. He is unclean. Surely he is unclean. And it happened the next day, the second day of the month, that David's place was empty. And Saul said to Jonathan, his son, Why has the son of Jesse not come to eat, either yesterday or today? So Jonathan answered Saul, David earnestly asked permission of me to go to Bethlehem. And he said, Please let me go, for our family has a sacrifice in the city, and my brother has commanded me to be there. And now, if I have found favor in your eyes, please let me go get away and see my brothers. Therefore, he has not come to the king's table." Then Saul's anger was aroused against Jonathan, and he said to him, You son of a perverse, rebellious woman, do I not know that you have chosen the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of your mother's nakedness? For as long as the son of Jesse lives on the earth, you shall not be established, nor your kingdom. Now therefore send and bring him to me, for he shall surely die. And Jonathan answered Saul his father and said to him, Why should he be killed? What has he done? Then Saul cast a spear at him to kill him by which Jonathan knew that it was determined by his father to kill David. So Jonathan arose from the table in fierce anger and ate no food the second day of the month, for he was grieved for David because his father had treated him shamefully. Wow, that's quite a, quite a scene if that was a movie. That's quite an incident. Saul, he's back against the wall, he's, but he's very, very zeroed in on where's David, where's David. It's, it's in his mind. It's running all the time. And uh, definitely, he's decided to kill. He's, he's ready even to kill his own son. This isn't the first time he even threatened to kill Jonathan. Uh, this, this guy has some problems. Anyway, what might we say here, I guess? Um, Saul wants his line to continue. He wants his son to be the next king after him. And he knows as long as David lives that that's not likely to happen. And so he's basically set to kill David. Uh, Jonathan is actually in the right, however. Jonathan says... Why should he be killed? What has he done? David's innocent. He's more than innocent. He's a hero, having served the Lord God and been faithful to him. So there we have it. That's the answer. And tomorrow morning, David's going to get it in the field. So sad. But God is on the side of those who serve him, even when, as we know from this, in this case, David has to be sent away. Seems like the end. It's not. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, Help us to be reconciled to your will. Uh, Saul is certainly not, and he's certainly not acting morally. And so now this sad news will come to David. And it's going to mean the, the end of the David and Jonathan uh, friendship situation for quite a while here. Lord, when people sort of land in exile, uh, help us to trust in you and know that that's a piece of time. It's a period in time. It's not the end. Lord, be our leader. May we trust all to you, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes we just have unreasonable, unfair people, and what we need to do is we just have to trust in God and then go where he sends us next. God be with you today in all that you do.